In today's video, I'm showing you my system for a very cost-effective waterproof shower. You don't have to break the bank to make it great. If you're a homeowner and you've been on the internet recently and you're researching for ways to waterproof your shower, you've been inundated with products. My God, it seems like there's a huge niche for do-it-yourself shower renovations because let's face it, the building code is really substandard in a lot of regions around the world regarding this matter. So where I'm from, we're allowed to use drywall and adhesive and stick tile on the wall and call it done. And I think it's embarrassing. Now, they've recently changed that. At least they want you to use a water resistant drywall, but that's just garbage that's going to last a few years longer. And so we have a lot of showers that are going five to 10 years and then they're failing. The problem is they're in brand new homes and they're failing in homes that have really nice materials and great finishes in them. And so people are having ceilings coming, getting all water stained and walls with the paints peeling down and mold issues related to shower junk that's not even 10 years old. It's got to stop and here's how you do it. So if you want to invest a ton of money and you're afraid your shower is going to fail, there are ways to do that. But if you want to get something done that's not going to cost you more money than the tile itself, then this is the system. Go with the mold resistant drywall. This has got a mold inhibitor and it is really fabulous because even if your system fails, it'll give you another 20 to 30 years before the mold grows through. So right there, you've got a 20 year shower. And the way you make it even better is instead of adding drywall compound and taping these joints, because the drywall compound is really going to cause you problems, use the Lepage 2-in-1 seal and bond. This is an adhesive sealant that we can use on traditional waterproof systems, okay, the orange membranes or all the different boards that are out there. This is the kind of sealant that they use. So they have rigid panels that you actually use a sealant to seal the joints and that's supposed to give you a lifetime guarantee. So you can use that in here as well. You just stick it in the corner, put on a decent healthy bead. This stuff is made for interior use so it doesn't have a lot of off gases. So you don't have to worry about it smelling like exterior caulking. When you're done, you just run your finger in that bad boy and press it down. Okay, of course it helps if you install your drywall where the butt joints are nice and tight. And if you have any leaks or holes, plug them up. Now wipe this off before you go too much further because that stuff is really sticky. So now we have walls that are all sealed up. Fabulous. The way we're going to finish that, of course, we're going to use a roll-on membrane. Now, there is more than one membrane out there. There's a MapEye product called Aqua Defense, and that's a nice product. We have that in one of our project videos, but today we're going to talk about Red Guard. Yeah, this is great. It's in your local building store, so you don't have to go hunting to find it. You can just go down to the local building store and pick up a pail. One of these will take care of your shower, no problem at all. But there is a way to put this on, and there are cautions that are in really, really fine print that most people won't read on the back of the label. So what I'm going to do is go through a couple of demonstrations here for you and show you how to apply this stuff. Now we're on a project here today and our client who's going to sell this house has agreed to allow us to use this product because it is still ugh, nice and pink. <clears throat> now before I put this on, I want to emphasize, according to the building code, what I have here right now is already good. I'm already up to coat. <laughs> the fact that I've used a, a sealant in the corners instead of drywall mud, I'm now above and beyond code. And as soon as I dip my brush in here, I am making the coat embarrassed, okay? So here we go. This is a, it's kind of like a paint, but it's really thick. Okay, that's ridiculous good, right? And it's cut and roll like any other paint. Now that adhesive there, I put that bead on about 15 minutes ago. That stuff sets up incredibly fast, so it's really convenient to work in this kind of environment. All right, and just want to lather it in the corners. Be really liberal here, okay? Now, if you're really concerned and you're picky, you can paint across the top. Truth is, the majority of waterproofing that needs to take place in a shower is from about here up to about there, and then this whole wall, okay? Outside of that, you're really wasting your time, but for posture's sake, we might as well just do the whole thing, right? You want to brush in the joints of the drywall. Now, these joints have been pressed together when they were installed. 
okay? And when you put two coats of this stuff on there, it'll create a bond and that'll be totally sealed up and waterproof as well. And just like you're painting a wall in your house, cut the bottom and cut the sides. They have a little bit more control with a brush than you will with a roller. Boom, boom, boom. And once you've picture framed this thing, you go out and get your roller. Okay, now I like to use a mini roller for this following reason. This stuff is just so thick. If you put a large nap roller and you fill it up, half of that can is going to be inside the roller. And you're going to spend all day long loading it up and cleaning it out when you're done. This is really not a lot of square footage. And the truth is, if this takes an extra couple of minutes, it's worth it. Because these little mini roller refills that are on the end of this, they're only a couple bucks each. And I would rather just throw it in the garbage than bother trying to clean this up. This is not about coverage. This is about density. You really want to get this on thick. You can't do it in one application. All right. So the trick to this program is paint it and then paint it again. And then if need be, paint it again. You want to have this nice and thick. Okay, when you're done, you don't want it to look like paint. You want it to look and feel like a membrane. You'll notice when I'm painting here that I haven't done anything to fill the screw holes. And I'll tell you why. This is how I gauge if I have enough. I've done one pass. I'm going to do another pass. I'm going to do another pass. When that screw hole is just a solid pink dot, then I know I've got enough on the wall. That's just my own little way of doing it. So now I'm just going to go and finish the rest of this off. So here's the thing. When you look at this, you're going to see different shades now. Okay, you can have pinks and reds and purples. You really want to be careful here. You want to wait until it's at least tacky before you do the next coat, or you're just pushing it around and you're not getting another layer. So when you see that dark red color, it's dry. It's about as fast as it took me to do the <laughs> brush and roll this thing. It's ready for another coat, okay? So that's that's fresh pink, right? You see the difference? On camera there, Max, you can see that? Okay, so we're gonna add another layer now. And I'm thinking you're probably best to do three, just so that you don't have any thoughts. I mean, if you're gonna spend 50 bucks on the tub, you might as well make sure that you got your money's worth. No sense trying to save $7 and not get the third coat on, especially when it only takes a few minutes, all right? This is one of these places where it just doesn't make sense to cut a corner because the, your value for your effort is just multiplied. The seal is gonna be 10 times better at three coats than it is at two. And it'll only take another 15 minutes. Okay, so here we are. We're just gonna do another coat. Now listen, every condition will be different. Temperature, humidity. So when you're in your house and you do your second coat, if you're really happy with it and you got a great coverage, then just be good. But if you need a third or a fourth, then by all means, go ahead and do it. You be the judge. But the point is, is you wanna have a nice, thick coat, all right? That's all there is for waterproof in the shower, the old fashioned way. We've been using this technique for over 40 years. All right. So don't worry about spending all that money on those fancy products. If you just want a shower that's going to last 20 years and then your tile will probably be really ugly by then anyway, and you'll need a new shower. So this works out really good. <laughs> okay. So listen, if you like this kind of content and you like seeing the old school kind of stuff, then hit the like button and uh, ask your questions below about waterproofing systems. We'll answer those for you every single day. We'd like to keep in touch with our viewers, so uh, looking forward to hearing from you. We'll talk again soon.